Downey Stunda Creations here in Millbridge, Maine. We're located along Maine's Bowl Coast, not very far from the U.S. Canadian border. Well, it's just a few weeks before Christmas, and this is the time of year here in Down East Maine where, well, the weather's just too cold to be able to do any projects outside or even in the shop because my shop is not insulated nor is it heated. And so this time of year is when I start getting into the indoor projects. Typically, uh, it has to do with a lot of artwork. And a few years ago, uh, during the first uh, oh, several months or a couple of years that I st uh, started making YouTube videos, I filmed several projects, uh, art-related, and uh, they seemed to go over pretty well. A lot of people liked them and had some good feedback. And so what I've done here is I've compiled a few of these in a logical progression if you're interested in doing some artwork, but you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, because I'm retired, and so I look for frugal ways to do this. And I did a little research, figured it out, and uh, I made these videos. They're all in the Arts and Crafts playlist on my Down East Thunder Creations YouTube channel. And uh, I've given a link to that playlist in the video description below. But these are just some of the highlights to let you know what you can do here and how you can save a lot of money. Uh, the first thing I'm doing is I'm building a frame because when you want to do some painting, you're going to paint on canvas and it doesn't matter whether it's oil based or acrylic based paints you're using, you typically paint on a canvas. You can paint on other uh, substrates if you want, of course, but typically uh, a canvas is used. And so I go through making a uh, making your own wooden frame to stretch the canvas on. Now, I'm not going to show you that whole video here. I'm just showing a few highlights. In fact, all of the videos, you're only going to see a few highlights. And so if you're interested, you can look at the video description below, uh, go to the playlist and watch what you want. And after I make the wooden frame, I then show you how to make um, canvas stretching pliers because when you put the canvas over the wooden frame you want to stretch it nice and tight and you can buy those canvas stretching pliers in your big box art stores but they're quite expensive so I did a video on making your own and then I went and actually got some canvas and I stretched that using the canvas stretching pliers and I, I uh, stretched canvas onto that wooden frame that I made and I give you a few tips and tricks in that video on where you can get some inexpensive canvas. So you don't have to spend, again, you don't have to go to the big box art, art stores and spend big money on their canvas. Now there are different grades of canvas, of course, and what I use is a bit rougher, but it also adds a lot of texture and interest to the painting you're doing. Uh, you know, it's up to you what you want to try. I then showed you how to make your own gesso and uh, preparations if you're going to do an oil-based painting. How uh, you pre prepare the canvas for that. Getting local materials and doing it yourself instead of buying pre-made, pre-prepared yeah, pre um, materials from the big box st uh, art stores. Uh, I also did that for if you're going to do an acrylic painting. How to make your own gesso and prep the canvas for an acrylic painting. And, uh, and then I also did a video on how to make your own desktop art easel. And I made an easel. I designed it uh, based upon scraps I had out in the shop that I could easily put together without having to go out and spend money. And there are also free plans available. Um, the, the details on how to get those free plans will be in the video description below that particular video on how to make your own desktop easel. So all of this stuff is available. This is a basic overview. Um, help you get ready for this coming winter because everybody across the northern U.S. and Canada and other, uh, you know, northern countries and climates uh, can make use of this if you're shut indoors and you just want to keep on going and you want to work on different projects. So I hope you'll find this video entertaining and I also hope you'll find it useful. And, uh, and if you do, if you enjoy it, you can help me a lot to keep this channel going by 
giving me giving me thumbs up give me a like and comment and share the video uh, subscribe ring the little bell if you do share it please share it not only with your friends but also on uh, other social media like Facebook or whatever uh, very much appreciated that does help my channel substantially and of course if you'd like you can also become a patron on patreon and, uh, and that helps a lot with materials and production cost so uh, thank you very much for watching I'm now using my 45 degree miter sled so I can cut the corners at 45 degrees so I'll have mitered corners when I go to put my frame together. That's all there is to that. All you want to do is be able to grab the canvas and stretch it. And I just saved myself about 25 bucks. This is just a canvas drop cloth purchased at Harbor Freight. 4 feet by 12 feet, oh, it's maybe about 14 cents per square foot with a 20% off coupon. And I'm going to take this canvas, I'm going to stretch it onto this frame, I'm going to show you how to do it. We start off with the uh, raw canvas frame and the type of uh, substrate I'll be using, I'll be mixing my, my chalk with or calcium carbonate also known as marble dust. This is the, the, the um, powdered marble. It's powdered marble and uh, the other ingredient, this is just basically Elmer's school glue. It's uh, PVA, white, Elmer's white glue is basically PVA glue.
well, I'm going to use this canvas. This is a store-bought canvas, and uh, we'll just assume it's a bare canvas, uh, and I'm going to prep it for acrylic paint. Instead of mixing traditional gesso for acrylic painting, a lot of people, they just use PVA glue mixed with a bit of acrylic paint, and, uh, and a lot of times they'll use baby powder, or they'll use this marble powder but instead I'm using this product right here but I'm going to thicken it up by using this uh, marble powder This is what it looks like. Very simple and easy to build. These plans are done in CAD. I drew them up just for this purpose and uh, because I needed a desktop easel. You can have a set of these for free if you want to download them in PDF format and then you can print them out on your own printer. This painting, it's actually a painting that I did in acrylic paints last year. And I used acrylic paints on onion skin and then I mounted the onion skin on a piece of uh, melamine hardboard and then built a frame around it using some reclaimed uh, white cedar. Uh, this lighthouse is the Peggy Cove Nova Scotia Lighthouse. And I'm still an amateur, I'm not a professional painter as you can see. Uh, still need a lot of work, but I have been improving in the acrylic, so this came out fairly nice. But I wanted to experiment this week, my very first time trying oil paints. I've never painted in oil-based paints. So I bought a really cheap set of oils. The oil paints came from China. I bought them at one of the big box uh, art stores. I didn't pay a whole lot of money for it. I did the same painting, uh, similar. And this is what I came up with, this wee little, little two and a half by two and a half inch square mini canvas. And I think I got that at uh, Walmart or something, another big box store. And it was cheap. I prepared the surface for oil-based paints. What you're looking at is a, uh, a painting I did. It's an acrylic painting of Peggy's Cove Lighthouse, located in Peggy's Cove, Nova Scotia. And uh, I did this last year in acrylic. I also painted it on an onion skin and then applied it to a hardboard backing. And the floating frame is uh, basically some old uh, white cedar that had been well weathered and I had reclaimed it. And what I'm going to do now is make a similar painting. I want to do another lighthouse painting similar to this using this as a model, but I might vary from it. And I'm going to do it on that little mini canvas, two inch by two inch. And instead of acrylic paints, I'm going to use, I'm going to attempt to use oil. Now all my professional artist friends that see this are going to be laughing uncontrollably when they see the results. But, uh, you know, I'm just an amateur and I do this for fun because uh, it makes me feel good and I enjoy it. So I would encourage all of you, if you've never done any painting before, to take it up.
and it doesn't matter how it comes out, it's uh, how you feel while you're doing it and you have a chance to express yourself. I just want to mount it on this frame and I'm just going to try to be careful. I'll put a little hot glue on there. Now what do you think? That's not, I, I should have cut this a little bit larger to have more of a border, more of a black border. And uh, I should have cut it a little bit deeper. But I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll take that off, that hot glue that'll pop right off. And later on, when I have time, I'll go ahead and cut that out a little deeper and a little bit wider and see what happens. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? 